All right, this is an example of electric flux density and Gauss's law. A charge distribution in free space has this rho v is 2r nanocoulombs per meter cubed for, and then this range of r, 0 to 10 meters, and 0 otherwise. Determine the electric field at radius 2 meters and radius 12 meters. So first of all, let's try to understand the problem. So the charge distribution is given by this rho v, and you'll notice that it's not constant. So that means uh, this is not a uniform distribution. We have radial symmetry here. The charge distribution de depends on the radius, how far away you are from the origin, and it increases linearly with the radius. So if this was the origin here, you know, you might have some charge here, and then as you get further away, you get more charged, right? Because as R is increasing, the, the charge distribution increases. So it increases linearly, linearly like this, and as long as R is held constant, that's true. So if R is held constant, this, the same would be the case here, right? So this is how it would be distributed. So you see right away that we have spherical symmetry. So I'm going to erase this actually, but what we want to do is we want to choose a Gaussian surface that is a sphere centered at the origin. And to answer this first problem, we're going to choose our Gaussian um, surface to have radius 2 meters. That way the Gaussian surface passes through or contains the point of interest. Okay, so now we're going to write down Gauss's law, which is an integral form, which is this thing here. This is uh, d dot ds, and that's the, uh, the closed surface integral there. And what is that integral equal to? Well, that's equal to the, the charge enclosed enclosed by our Gaussian surface. Okay, and I'm going to remind you the Gaussian surface because there are really two spheres here. The Gaussian surface has a radius of two meters. The other surface is is the surface or the other sphere the other sphere is the sphere that contains all of the charge which has a radius of ten meters. Okay, so this Q enclosed, this is the amount of charge that's being enclosed by our Gaussian surface. Okay, so how do we find that? Well we integrate in this case the volume distribution there. So we're going to integrate over our surface, right? So this is r goes from 0 to 2 because our Gaussian surface is 2 meters. And then we're going to, in, this is a sphere, so uh, theta goes from 0 to pi. And phi goes from um, 0 to 2 pi, right? And over that, integral, our charge distribution is 2r nanocoulomb, so that's 10 to the minus 9th. Okay, and then the differential volume is that r squared sine theta d theta. Actually, so we wrote phi down first. I'm going to write phi, and then we wrote theta, and then we wrote r. Okay, and we've talked about that differential volume element many times now. Okay, so I'm going to compute the, the this triple integral first. So this thing, I'll try to squeeze it in over here. Uh, so if we can, if we integrate with respect to phi first, well that's easy because there are no phi's in our integrand. So integrating over phi uh, just gives us two pi. We pick out up a, a two pi there. So this is going to be r equals zero to two theta goes from 0 to pi, and then we now have 4 pi times 10 to the minus 9th, then that r cubed sine theta d theta dr, like that. Okay, so now I'm going to integrate with respect to theta. So when I so the only theta here is in the sine, sine theta. When I integrate sine theta, I get minus cosine theta. So this is going to be r goes from zero to two, and then I'm going to have four a minus from the from the integral minus four pi times ten to the minus ninth r cubed cosine of theta, and that goes from theta goes from zero to pi, and then dr. 
right? And so when I plug in the bounds, um, cosine of pi is minus 1 minus cosine of 0 is minus 1. So I have minus 1, um, a cosine of 0 is plus 1, excuse me. So I have minus 1 minus um, 1, which is minus 2, and then the minus sign makes a plus 2, and so this gives me r goes from 0 to 2, then that picks up a 2, so I've got 8 pi times 10 to the minus 9th, right, r cubed dr. Okay, so when I do that, I, I uh, integrate with respect to r, so that's a 1 fourth, so that makes that a 2 pi, r to the fourth. So this is 2 pi times 10 to the minus 9th, r to the fourth, after the integration, r goes from 0 to 2. Okay, so uh, 2 to the 4th is 16 times 2 is 32 pi times 10 to the minus 9th minus what I get when I plug in 0, uh, which is 0. And this is a charge enclosed, so this is in coulombs, C. Okay, uh, 16, yeah, 32 times 10 to the minus 9th. Okay, so, uh, so, did I do that integral right? 2 times 2 is 4, 16, 16, 2, yes. Okay, so now that is the right-hand side, the charge enclosed, and so now let's talk about the left-hand side. So our Gaussian surface, we, we know that this thing, the, uh, the charge has radial symmetry. So we've chosen a Gaussian surface as a sphere as well. So that radial symmetry then, passes through our, our Gaussian surface. So that means everywhere on the surface, d, the flux density, is normal, Okay, which means it's, it's actually it's parallel to ds, because ds also points radially, right, nor, or normal to the surface. And so it's parallel to ds, so the dot product, we don't have to worry about any angle. The, the dot product gives us the cosine of that angle is 1. And then also everywhere on the surface, because of radial symmetry, d is constant. So again, so d only has a radial component, right, because of this radial symmetry. So we would write that like this, showing that d has a radial component. Okay, and so that left-hand side of this integral, this part, is going to be this. So we're going to take d, and when we dot it with ds, since they're parallel, since d and ds are parallel to one another, we just have the radial component times the differential surface element, like this. And so, when we do that integration, then, and because dr is constant everywhere on the surface, the dr can come out in front. That's key here. So we've got the integral just over the surface, so that's the surface area. So that's dr, the surface area of our Gaussian surface, so that's 4 pi r squared, and r is 2. Okay, so again, this is the left-hand side of that, that equation there. And so this is equal to the charge enclosed, which we found was 32 times 10 to the minus 9th coulombs, right? Okay, so when we solve for this, when we, when we solve for dr, we get, uh, what do we get? So we've got uh, 2 times 2 is 4, right? And 4 times 4 is 16, so that makes this a 2, and the pi's cancel, times 10 to the minus 9th, and this is coulombs per square meter, because this is uh, f electric flux density, so coulombs per square meter, coulombs per area. Okay, so, and then remember, that was in the radial component, or that was in the radial direction, so that d, then the vector d, is uh, is just 2 times 10 to the minus 9th times the uh, unit vector in the radial direction, coulombs per square meter. Okay, so we've got the electric flux density, so how do we get E? Well, remember that, that they're related just by that constant epsilon 0, permittivity of free space. 
So this is 10, 2 times 10 to the minus 9th over epsilon 0 times the unit vector. And the electric field is measured in volts per meter. And so when I do that, when I, when I calculate that, remember epsilon 0 is 8.854 times 10 to the minus 12. And so when I, when I plug in those numbers, I get 226 uh, times a unit vector in the r direction volts per meter, and that is the answer. Okay, now, so I'm going to instead now calculate the electric field at r is equal to 12. So uh, again, feel free to pause the video if you like. Um, but uh, I'm going to erase a little bit of this, and I'm going to I'm not. I'm not going to erase it all. I'm going to just show you what changes here. So you should you should pause it and think about what is going to change as we change um, our Gaussian surface from two meters to twelve meters. So now over here our Gaussian surface is now twelve meters. So the first thing you should notice is that when we expand our Gaussian surface to twelve meters, we enclose all of the charge, right? Because the charge stops becoming non-zero at 10 meters. So if we want the charge enclosed, what's going to change in this integral? The bound from 0 to 2 is going to change. Now do I want 12 there or do I want 10 there? Hopefully you said 10 because, I, because I'm calculating the total charge and the, cho the charge ends at 10. So I'm going to erase uh, that, that 12 here. right? And instead, I'm going to put a 10 there. I'm just calculating the, the entire charge. And so when we get down to, so this will this will be maybe I'll show the changes in green. So this is green, right? And so this will be 10, and this will be 10, and this will be 10, and then I'll plug in 10 here. Okay. So once we do that we get, according to my calculations, um, we get 2 pi times 10 to the minus fifth coulombs. Okay, so this is again, this is r equals 12 meters. That's how much charge we're enclosing now. Okay, so now let's, let's talk about the left-hand side of this equation. Well, our Gaussian surface, so again, because we're using a sphere, the uh, the, the electric flux density is constant and uh, normal to our surface, so it can come out of the integral. Now I just need to calculate the surface area of our Gaussian surface. So instead of 2 here, this now is going to be 12, because our Gaussian surface is 12 meters. And so, according to my calculations, that makes this thing here not uh, 32. Um, oh, oh that's equal to the right-hand side, so that's going to be equal to that 2 pi times 10 to the negative fifth coulombs, like that. And so, um, you know, we've got 12 squared, which is 144. So when we solve for dr there, we get dr is 2 times 10 to the minus 5, right, from there, divided by 576, which is 12 squared times 4. And so that is equal to, uh, we'll just keep it like that for now, but that's measured in coulombs per square meter, right? And then um, if I wanted to express that as a vector, that would be 2 times 10 to the minus fifth over 576 AR direction in the in the radial direction right coulombs per square meter and so that would make e right so that makes e 2 times 10 to the minus fifth over 576 times epsilon 0 in the radial direction volts per meter and remember epsilon 0 is uh, 8 0.854 times 10 to the minus 12, and so when we plug in those numbers, we get 393 in the radial direction kilovolts per square or per meter.